Hey guys, this is Trey with Ruguru Lacrosse. Today I want to talk to you about what's going on in the world of helmets. Um, as many of you know, uh, recently uh, two of the you know most worn helmets in the game have been uh, decertified by the certif by the certifying board uh, that kind of certifies our helmets, which you know not a good thing. So I'm going to kind of do a rundown of what may have caused it, kind of what happened, at least in my view and opinion, and kind of the series of events that, you know, kind of took place. So the certifying board here is the N-O-C-S-A-E. It's stamped on any lacrosse helmet that you have, um, unless you're wearing a lacrosse helmet from the first round of lacrosse helmets, then you may not have that stamped on there. Um, although that's the picture of what's on there, which is kind of funny when you think about it. Um, Anyway, this helmet, the Cascade R, which this one's my personal one, in the Mardi Gras colors, because we are in New Orleans here. So the NOLC, um, my uh, my men's league team, we use Mardi Gras colors. We all wear a little different helmets here and there. Um, but for the most part, we try to stick with the theme of the purple, green, and gold. So anyway, Cascade R helmet was decertified as well as the Warrior helmet, uh, which I believe is the Regulator. I don't keep up with the Warrior Helmets because I don't believe in them because I think that they're junk. That's just me personally. I think Warrior makes a lot of great products. I think their helmets are junk, and I'm actually not surprised they lost their certification. Um, that's just my personal opinion. So lots of people like them to each their own. I guess whatever floats your boat, right? So anyway, let's continue forward. Uh, what I think spurred this, and I think most people would agree, is the release of the STX helmet with their uh, joint venture with Shoot or Shut um, I really don't know how the helmet name is pronounced, is uh, S-E-U-T-T, -T, um, or S-E-U-H-T-T, -T, whatever. I'm going to find out, and I'll put it in the comments below. Anyway, that helmet company is known for football helmets. Uh, I never personally used one of their helmets. Uh, we always used Rydell, or Riddle, or whatever you want to call that one, too. I don't know why these helmet companies have such ridiculous names. Cascade seems like a great name, because everyone can pronounce that. Um, anyway... <laughs> Uh, right now, which I know also had a venture into lacrosse on its own, um, and I did own one of those helmets. It was the most protective helmet I ever wore, but it was also the heaviest, the clunkiest, and the least refined lacrosse helmet. So it was awful as a lacrosse helmet, great as a piece of protective equipment. Um, so back to the shut helmet, or STX helmet, the Stallion. It's made by, uh, I always call them shut, so we're going to go with shut. They are known in football for having very, very, very good protective helmets, as well as Rydell. Those are the two top companies going as far as helmets go in football. Very high impact resistance. So that technology is going to carry over into lacrosse. Not a bad deal. Now they obviously look like they, you know, since they did actually join with a lacrosse company this time around to do that, um, that it may actually be a good lacrosse helmet. I would think that it is. It's most certainly is protection. Protection is not the part you got to worry about. Um, and it's insane. It's insanely customizable. Go check out the customization thing. It's it's killer. The factory customization that comes from that helmet. However, I know a lot of us love our Cascades. I love my Cascade helmet. Um, I know a lot of people that you know. You could tell them that the helmet would explode upon impact of a ball flying at exactly eighty three point three miles per hour, and they'd go, eh, "I love my Cascade. I'm still gonna wear it." So, um, you know, that's how much a lot of a lot of us you know laxers love Cascade. Anyway. It lost its certification after being out for almost two years, um, which is crazy to think that it lost its certification. The older model helmet, or the previous model helmet, uh, kept it. The CPXR kept it. It's just the R, for some reason, didn't keep it, even though it's the most widely used helmet in lacrosse. So I don't quite understand how that works, but whatever. Now, what the certification board does is it sets a set of parameters, or a set of specifications, whatever you want to call, that the helmet has to meet and any sporting equipment, actually. They do shoulder pads, arm pads, whatever. They do all kinds of padding uh, across many, many sports. Um, I think they also certify uh, government protect, like uh, military things as well, I do believe. Uh, motorcycle helmets, all kinds of things. They, you know, they certify for whatever those parameters are. Now, it can either meet means it passes or it fails. It is a pass-fail. It's not a, it got a 98 out of 100, it got a 72 out of 100. It passed or failed. So you don't really know whether what you bought was better than what else is out there. You just don't. They don't tell you that. It's a pass-fail, um, which a lot of people think is irrelevant, but, you know, you kind of want to know. So in that instance, um, you know, 
STX released their helmet. They released their independent testing from different labs of 30 random helmets, uh, decided that all of the R's failed, which is crazy to think about. And the majority of the regulators, I think, also failed too. Um, so they lost the certification because what happened was the certifying board went out and they went and bought helmets off the shelf, did their own independent test, and also found that they failed. How does this happen? Cascade, um, you know, they said they sent helmets to two different labs, and both labs came back and said that their helmets are fine. So they guessed at first that maybe they just had the helmet positioned wrong on the robot, um, which, you know, if you know how these helmets are supposed to fit, it does not wear like this on your head. You look through the top bar, not the middle bar, not the bottom bar. If you're looking through here, you got some serious issues going on. You should be looking through this top bar. Um, and if you don't have it on wrong, then yeah, it probably isn't going to be as protective as it should be. Um, the Warrior one, I don't really know. Warrior, uh, I can say I'm disappointed in their response to it. As a matter of fact, I just checked on their website before this video. They don't mention a single thing about their helmet failing, nor about the remedy for it. Cascades, when you first come up, there's like five pop-ups that explain what's going on, what they're doing to fix it, you know, and to please bear with them. They have you register your helmet, which I'll show you where the serial number is at on that helmet again. Um, they tell you what happened, what they're working on to fix it, and if you need helmets immediately, give them a call, and they're going to find a way to get you helmets so you can keep playing, um, which my guess is they're probably going to swap it out for a CPXR since those did pass. Now, Warrior, on the other hand, their whole response to the situation was just disappointing. It basically was, we understand what was said, and we know we lost our certification, but we don't care because our guy said it was certified, so it's certified. We're Warrior. Take a hike. Um, not exactly a great way to answer, uh, especially when it comes to the safety of players and more importantly, parents safety of their children like me, whatever. I'm an adult. I can decide what I want to, but if my nephews were playing and they were wearing a, com uh, a helmet from a company that responded that way, I'd be upset about it. I'd tell them, take your helmet back. Um, which first off, like I said, I think warrior helmets are junk. That's my personal opinion. There's a reason why our team uses Cascade helmets. There's a reason why the majority of the guys that we play in my men's league also use Cascade helmets. Um, our high school team are required to have Cascade helmets for a reason. So, you know, I, I was disappointed and worried on that fact. I mean, they're a big name in lacrosse, and I feel it's just a really bad way to go about it. And instead, Cascade's doing it the right way. I think Warrior's doing it the wrong way. Um, now... Like I said, Cascade said they're working on a retrofit. They're working on getting them uh, certified again with the retrofit. Uh, and then they're going to find a way to retrofit all the helmets and get them back to us. Which means you probably have to ship your helmet in and wait a couple of week, days, weeks, however long they figure out it's going to be. Or take it to a certified retailer to, re, you know, to install the retrofit. Whatever they figure out to do, they're going to figure it out. They're going to get you taken care of. And that's awesome. Um, now let's talk about um, where this serial number is on your helmet. If you're having problems finding it, uh, you can look. They do show you on Cascade, but I'm going to go ahead and show you too. Uh, you're going to look under the left uh, temple pad or ear pad of your helmet. Uh, let's see if I can get it on camera. It's hard to see. It's a little silver sticker in here. Um, let's see. See that little silver box? It's right under there, right there where my finger is. Um, I know you can't see it that well on camera because it, it isn't easy to see, but you use the bottom numbers on there, type it in, um, and they will keep you up to date and let you know what you need to do to get your helmet recertified. Now, I know what you're asking is, well, what if I don't want the CPXR? I want my CPXR, and, or I, want, I don't want the CPXR, but I want my R helmet, but I don't want to stop playing just because it got decertified. Does that mean that it's not a safe helmet? No, that does not mean it's not a safe helmet. Not in any way, shape, or form does it mean that any helmet that loses its certification is not safe. All right, like I said, this helmet's been out almost two years. I think we would have found out by now. Uh, number two, no helmet is going to stop you from a concussion, plain and simple. So anyone who thinks that, please stop thinking that. All right, it's stopping you from death. That's what it's stopping you from. It's stopping you from dying. It's stopping you from ending up in the hospital in a coma. It's not stopping you from getting a concussion, okay? It's stopping you from head fractures. It's gonna help prevent concussions as much as possible, but it's not gonna stop it. You also have to have a proper mouth guard. Uh, that helps with concussions, and using proper form will help you prevent concussions. But if you're gonna get a concussion, you're gonna get a concussion whether you got a helmet or not, all right? It's gonna happen. Whether you got the top of the line helmet, or you have a five-year-old helmet, a concussion is a concussion, it's going to happen. You can't stop liquid moving in your head. It's going to bounce around, okay? So please 
don't think just because you have this helmet or the latest and greatest or the STS helmet or whatever it is that you can't get a concussion with that helmet because that's just simply not true. Pay attention to how you hit people, how you take the hits, don't duck your head, and above all, you know, make sure it fits right. Don't have your chin strap so too loose. Don't have it tilted back on your head. Fit your helmet right. Get your chin strap right. Make sure it's fit to your head snug. Make sure you have a mouth guard in, and that's what's going to help you the most. Form and then having those other things from concussions. So, you know, to me, I'm going to keep using it either way. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't see why not. I've taken enough hits to the head in this helmet being a goalie that I think if I was going to have a problem, I'd have one by now. Um, as soon as the retrofit goes in, I'm sending it in to make sure, and we're good to go. Same thing with our team. We shut down for the fall. Um, my high school team that I coach, uh, we shut down for the fall instead of trying to get all the helmets redone because by the time we'd get them redone and get them back, it'd probably be done anyway. We had two weeks left, so we just went ahead and shut down. We told the guys, you know, keep practicing. If you want to play, you're probably fine, but that's up to you and your parents. So um, guys, just stay tuned with Cascade. Keep in touch with your retailer, local retailer, which you know your local la- lacrosse store, uh, Cascade rep, whoever it is that you talk to about your helmets or where you get them from. Keep in touch with them. Check Cascade's website. Check your emails. Once you register, please go register your helmet, um, and they're going to take care of you. They're doing what they can to to fix the problem, which is what you want to see out of a company. Uh, if you have a warrior helmet, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I say, I guess, get in touch with the warrior guys and see what they have to tell you and hopefully they can give you a much better answer uh, than what they originally released so until next time i'm trey with rougarou lacrosse um hopefully this helmet issue gets resolved soon and i will see you next time